Hi guys and welcome to The Aging Games. Today I'll be talking about the best hairstyles for ladies over 50. Now I'm not a hairdresser and I'm not a fashion expert by any means, so what makes me an expert on this topic? Well, I've had every single hair color <laughs> under the sun, under the rainbow. I've had every single hairstyle you can imagine. I've had every length and I really love doing my own hair. So, you know, I love curling it, I love straightening it. I can do my own color. I've done my own hair extensions in the past. I can pretty much do anything and I do love doing hair. And I've also noticed throughout the years that different hairstyles, different colors will suit me better. I do have to keep making changes and adjustments as I'm getting older because different things look differently on me. So the first thing that I wanted to mention to you guys when it comes to hair that can be very, very aging for someone, especially once we're reaching the ripe age of 50 and beyond, the worst thing, one of the worst mistakes that we can make is to walk around with, with frizzy hair. So what happens with frizzy hair, basically when you wash your hair and you're not straightening it, you're not curling it, you know, and you, you're not naturally, like some people, I have a friend who just wakes up or jumps into the pool, comes out and her hair just dries perfectly. It just looks, it looks like it's been styled at the salon. It's, it's unbelievable, so unfair. My hair, after I wash it, if I don't do anything with it, it looks like a frizz ball. I look like a witch and I look like I'm 20 years older if I don't do anything with it, it just looks horrible so for me i have to straighten it or i have to curl it i have to give it some kind of texture and style so that it looks nice and then my whole face changes completely compared to that really frizzy look and i'm sure you've seen that you've noticed that on other women that are you know just literally just washing their hair and leaving it for a lot of people it's not really a nice look it can be very very aging now the next thing that i wanted to talk to you about is color and that's a really difficult thing as well because you know for example people with dark hair or you know for example brown hair and they were dyeing their hair black their whole lives and even as they get into their 50s they just cling to this dark color because it's always been black so they they want to have black hair but after a certain age having really dark hair especially black hair can be very aging for the skin when you have like a dark frame around your face it kind of brings out all the imperfections so much more as opposed to a lighter shade which kind of blends everything in and gives it a much softer look my natural hair color is a dark brown it's like a dark chestnut brown which i haven't had in a really really long time i'm mostly gray i would say probably about 90 percent gray especially in the front so like now if i would put on a dark wig it just makes me look horrible it makes me look so much older and you probably notice this also on older women that are still doing the really dark hair and even when it's your natural hair it can still be very very aging so what they experts recommend is to go at least two to three shades lighter or add some soft highlights especially around the face that can really make a, a big difference so basically you want to bring light and softness to your face so for that reason hair color is super important and it's so difficult to find the right shade you know really red colors can also be aging so you have to be careful with those a nice soft brown with some blonde highlights can be very complimentary and can look really great on a lot of women and then a lot of women like me as we get older we start going blonder and blonder and blonder and that's definitely what happened to me i've been blonde on and off for like the past 30 years but i've just gradually been going much much lighter the problem with me my hair grows really fast and when i had a darker shade of blonde you could literally see the roots like like I had to go to get the color done every two weeks like every two weeks I would have at least the front done and then every four weeks the whole thing but you would really see this line you know where the the gray was starting to show and then the rest of my hair was a bit darker and it was just a real pain and then during lockdown when I was doing my own hair color I just decided to go a couple of shades lighter and since doing that I'm so happy and so relieved it took me a little bit of time to get used to this lighter blonde because I think maybe with the darker blonde my skin my face looked a little bit better i liked how my skin looked more but with this i can go four weeks five weeks even six weeks without doing my roots because it just blends so much better with my hair so obviously the lighter you can go or the lighter blonde highlights you can put into your hair the more it's going to blend with that pesky gray which we all hate i just can't believe that actually nobody has discovered anything to combat gray hair i know we've had this we've had a couple of uh, domains and things like that registered for like 20 years because we were so certain with my husband that we're going to come up with something some kind of a supplement or something to combat gray hair but we haven't so if you guys have any tips for that i am so open to this i would really really 
love to know. So hair color, back to hair color. So blondes can work very well, especially with graying hair. Again, the softer the color around the face, it's just, it really makes a huge difference. You need to really play around with it, especially blondes have so many different shades. Just a bit off the shade that looks good on you and, and you can look washed out or if it's it's got too many orange pigments in the blonde then it's it's also not a nice look for everybody you know strawberry blonde will suit some people and it looks horrible on other people for me I really need to go like an ashier blonde for my face but other people do suit the strawberry blonde so it's really good to go to a good hairdresser someone who really specializes in colors and that can help determine the right color for you if you're coloring your hair at home you know keep in mind that the color on those boxes is so deceiving it's never actually the color that your hair is going to turn out so many different factors in influence the color that you're going to get so especially if you're making a big change a big color change it's really good to go to a color specialist who's going to work with you and get just the right shade for you and you really want to get something that's not high maintenance not like how I used to have where I had to do the color every two weeks you know you want to be able to comfortably go four weeks and not having to you know hide your roots and cover your roots and while we're talking about roots actually i wanted to tell you guys like i wear my hair straight quite a bit as well but as the roots start showing and my hair starts growing what i find that if i do curls i can do curls like what i have now or even smaller curls and the curls are really great for hiding light roots the the gray roots because you know it lifts everything here so you don't see it as much as you know when you just have the part and then everything's straight especially if you have the part in the middle you know then it's even more visible you can see the roots much more so you can play around with the part split it on the side make a messy part that is not so straight there are all these different ways to hide it and you can also use there's all these different cover-ups that you can use for your roots i've found some have worked better than others but that's also something that can get you going for another week or two between colors so those things are really important now as far as haircuts and hair length now I'm sure you've heard this before that after a certain age you're not supposed to wear your hair long because it's very aging it doesn't look good and then from the back you look like you're a high school girl and then from the front like you should be in a museum there was some kind of saying like that I don't really agree with this I mean I wouldn't want to have my you know hair down to my waist I think that would be a little bit extreme I think that looks much better on young girls than it would for a woman my age but you know I do like like I like the bobs I like the chin length I like the shoulder length which is very fashionable right now I've had like very short hair as well after I had my son 24 years ago I did like it at the time but it's just really not me I know it really suits some people so much especially if you have really nice soft petite facial features then short hair can be amazing and super easy to maintain but for me I like playing with it I like having ponytails and I love buns and you know playing around with it so I really need to have longer hair so that I can do all of that I do find that I need to like when I get my hair cut I always cut soft layers you can see these pieces here are much shorter I always keep this short no matter how long the rest is because these help to frame my face so especially when it's just straight for example if I would have just long straight hair all the way down then it would just drag my whole face down it would drag my features down and again I'm sure you know women like that who are older straight think of Demi Moore for example you know she just has that straight dark long hair and I don't think it's very flattering for her feature she's got a very beautiful face but it just doesn't bring out the best on, in her face so I think you can do so much with like soft layers soft highlights and you know having a really nice cut I think especially once you get into your 50s the quality of your hair is so important my philosophy is that I would never sacrifice length for quality so I would rather have shorter hair but have really good quality hair I want it to be healthy I don't want the ends to be split I don't want it to look dry and in a terrible state you know especially because it's blonde it, it can look frazzled it's not a nice look at all so if my hair is not in a good state then I would rather cut it shorter and have it healthy looking and especially over 50 ladies it's so important to have healthy looking hair because it just gives your whole face and your body and everything a healthy youthful look look so you know keep going for those cuts put nice layers to frame you know don't just follow the latest in hairstyles and whatever their latest fashion is because those are you know basically designed for 20 year olds and also make sure that you find the look that looks good on you sometimes it's not about clinging to what we had when we were 20 because obviously when you're 20 everything looks good on you so you have to kind of change with the times and see you know how what you need to do what kind of changes you need to make maybe you've had the same hairstyle for 20 years and it's time to make a change 
change and to do something different and try out new things and see what works for you because you can literally with the right hairstyle with the right color you can easily take 10 years off your face now as much as quality of hair is important and the health how healthy your hair is also you know a lot of us are suffering from thinning hair from hair loss and that can be so it's just so overwhelming and disturbing. I started losing my hair about 10 years ago and it really, really scared me. So I've been using everything to try to increase the quality of my hair and to increase the density. And especially here, I mean, I was like literally bald. You could see the scalp. It was just frightening and you know when you're 40 and you can already see the scalp it's like what's going to happen 10 years 20 years down the road so what works really well for me i do use castor oil on my scalp i rub it into my scalp the night before that i would wash it and just sleep with it i also go for regular prp treatments you can see more about this on my video here and the prp treatments where they draw your own blood and they separate the plasma and they inject this into your scalp and this helps to stimulate new hair growth and this honestly works so amazing for me especially here in the front like this used to be so thin and like it was like nothing and now it's just the whole density and everything is so much better and i'm so happy with it there are a lot of things that you can do if you are suffering from hair loss you know make sure you rule out that you're not having some kind of thyroid problems or iron deficiency it can be so many things it could be stress related it's also one of the menopausal syndromes so you have to make sure your hormones are balanced so if you are suffering from hair loss all is not lost because there are a lot of things you can do and you can regain your hair i'm example of that so just back to can you have long hair in the second half of your life you know after middle age or after a certain age you certainly can i mean it's up to you and it's whatever makes you feel good whatever makes you feel sexy there are so many beautiful older women that are sporting just gorgeous beautiful hair but again it just goes back to keeping it healthy keeping it cut regularly keeping it colored regularly finding a color that is suitable for your face if you want to have it all long Keep some nice soft layers around your face that will make a really big difference find a good hairdresser find a good stylist find a good color specialist that's going to find you the perfect color and honestly guys with the hair you can just change your your whole outlook on life for me when i wake up and my hair looks amazing it's like i'm gonna have a fantastic day and then you know some of those days when you wake up and the hair is just like ah what do you do with this and it's just it's just a bad way to start the day so ladies take good care of your beautiful hair and i hope you found these tips helpful again i'm you know i'm not an expert i'm just sharing my own experience with you if you have anything any other tips to add or anything to this i would really love to hear it do check out my other videos because i have the video about castor oil and how it can help hair growth and also growth of eyelashes even eyebrows and then also check out my video about prp and what you can do to increase hair growth and to stop hair loss because those are also really important another thing that you can do is red light therapy i also have a video about that and red light also helps stimulate hair growth so those are good little tips and also you know try to use natural shampoos natural conditioners natural hair dyes if you can and just be gentle with your hair Thank you so much guys for watching. Please check out my book below with over 100 different anti-aging tips. It's now a number one bestseller on Amazon. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more from me, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the little bell so you get notifications every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching guys.